What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods coming at y'all with another episode in our Big 12 and 30 days. We are rounding out the Big 12 with Oklahoma State now. We got West Virginia up last, but today we are joined by Oklahoma State Insider, Site Manager for Cowboys Ride for Free, which is part of the SB Nation websites, which is an amazing set of websites. Make sure to go check them all out. And host of the No Luck Podcast, Micah Allen, is joining us tonight. And I just want to say I appreciate you joining me. I appreciate you plugging my Dungeons & Dragons podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, yeah, I know how it feels, man. No matter what it is, is if, if someone on the uh, comes on the podcast, whatever they're doing, we're plugging no matter what it is. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, well, I mean, let's start with last season. I I just want to say this, this first part is going to be a sensitive topic. I took a lot of criticism. I had Oklahoma State winning the Big 12 last year. I had Chuba Hubbard maybe winning the Heisman. I got just ridiculed for this team last year. I was the biggest Oklahoma State fan. They get to eight and three, though. They find themselves in the top six at the midpoint of the season. They, you know, until that OT loss to Texas, which which could have went either way. Did this season for you, though, meet, exceed, or fall short of your preseason expectations? That's a that's a good question. I mean, I think I think it met my expectations. I think what happened was kind of what I expected to happen. The only thing that was kind of mind blowing to me was 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 that loss to TCU. Um, I, I didn't. I knew that we would have a fluky loss. That's just not who I was expecting it to be. Um, I also kind of thought Shuba was going to have a better season than he did. Um, so, but overall, I think, I think as the season progressed and we kind of began to understand who this team was, it, it kind of all started to make sense, I think. Right. And I mean, we also had the quarterback injury early in the season, which really threw a, a, just a whole loop into things. That Tulsa game became way harder than it probably should have been. And so were the coming weeks, but you mentioned, you know, Chuba Hubbard. This this is someone I have I, – I don't know if anyone could put their finger on it. A 2,000-yard rushing year in 2019, over 20 rushing touchdowns. This year, 600 yards and five touchdowns. Now, I, I don't think anyone in the world saw this coming, but for you, what really just seemed to be missing this year for Hubbard? And do you think he'll take that next step when he heads to the NFL, I guess, tonight or tomorrow night? So I I honestly could never really pinpoint what I like specifically thought was wrong. Um, there were times where we thought he might have been playing through an injury. Um, we 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 you know our our staff over at CRFF just kind of felt like he might have been you know more hurt than he might have been leading on at points. Um, but also, I think there might have been some 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 mental stuff going on with him, um, with everything that happened last summer, um, and you know, with the whole you know you had the whole Gundy shirt OAN thing that happened. There might have been some locker room stuff, um, but you know, overall, I think it was a lot of things that just culminated together into kind of a tough time for Chuba last year, um, but. You know, I, I think I, I don't I don't think that that that's going to be something that continues on with his NFL career. I think he'll be able to bounce back um, pretty easily. So um, wherever he ends up, I think they're going to be getting a really great player in Tuba. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, the Mike Gundy situation, we already covered that on this podcast. And I said it could have went either of two ways, either. They work it out and it's kind of like a rally cry for the team or it becomes a morale just. It, it just tears apart the team, like you said, and I, th I think that could be a thing. I also thought the offensive line didn't play very well at times last year. I felt like they were young at certain spots. And really outside of Tevin Jenkins, I don't know if they were elite. Um, but, you know, looking at the quarterback spot, this is one of the most highly criticized positions in all the country, and I don't know if there's a more criticized player than Spencer Sanders and – what he does week in and week out for you though do you think sanders gets overlooked by some fans and especially the college football media and what do you think his potential is moving forward oh spencer 
that that's <laughs> he he he's he was a roller coaster to watch last year. Um, there were times where I was like, that is who I knew that he could be. Um, and then there were other times where I just was incredibly unimpressed. Um, but overall, you know, I he's he's one of those players, his ceiling is really high, but his floor is really low. Um, and I am really what I'm looking for this season is I want him to show me who he really is. I want I want to to figure out if the things that people were saying about him were true because as of right now there's nothing really that says that, you know, the media was overlooking him or he was you know, underrated or anything like that. Um at this point in my opinion, I think the media has been pretty fair to Spencer. Um, but you know, this season, I'm really looking for him to step up. He's going to be, you know, a veteran player. He's going to be, you know, the starting quarterback. And I just, I want to see what he looks like. And also hopefully he's completely healthy all year. I think his injury really, um, kind of, that was a mental block for him too. So we'll just have to see what happens in 2021 to kind of really see what the media should think of Chuba in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think, like you said, Spencer, I think there's there might not be a hotter, but at the same time, colder quarterback than Sanders at times. I mean, this kid can go from looking like the best quarterback in the Big 12 to, man, how does he even have a starting position at times? And I, I thought the backup played pretty well at times as well, but I want to move to the other side of the ball. This is where I think Oklahoma State really impressed a lot of people um, with that defense. And there's been this narrative for years that the Big 12 doesn't play defense. We saw West Virginia lead the nation in passing defense. Oklahoma State had a like top 20 defense at times this year. For for me, though, I want to know what has been the biggest difference in the defensive philosophy under Jim Knowles as defensive coordinator, and how has he built this defense up into a really, really elite defense? So... I under under Glenn Spencer, it was a lot of bend don't break. Um, and since Knowles has taken over, it's less of that and more just we're gonna stop you from scoring. <laughs> um, and I I I've really really been impressed with Jim Knowles and what he's been able to do in his three years at Oklahoma State. Um, last year wasn't a really important. Uh, last year was a really important year for Knowles, um, and I think he delivered. Um, you know, and his recruiting has been really good too. Um, you've got guys like Malcolm Rodriguez, um, Amon Albogbamiga, and you know, the guys that have been really, really awesome for him that might have been a little bit overlooked, um, at other schools that he's been able to kind of snatch from underneath other schools and make them really great players for Oklahoma State. So, um, you know, I, I think that, that, he's built this defense into something that has just worked really well with the way the big 12 plays offense. Um, and, you know, there are guys that do get beat in coverage sometimes, but, you know, I think that that's, that that's something that, you know, you'll take whenever, you know, you're getting interceptions and things like that are happening. Um, so, you know, overall, I think that he's just, He's made it his system. He, he what worked at what what worked at Duke. He's making work here, um, which has been just really awesome to see. And we've been really really happy with Jim Knowles. Yeah, and I, I think the recruiting, like you said, is a big part because it, st- it takes a step up. That that Texas pipeline is a lot stronger than anything Duke has. You know, being because so, Duke has to compete with the Clemson, they have to compete with all the SEC programs. Oklahoma State's right there at Texas. There's some good talent in the Midwest. And I think y'all have one of the best secondaries in the Big 12, too. I, I really like uh, Colby Harville Peel. I think that kid is going to be a star one day. I really, really like him. He was one of my safeties to watch this year. But moving on to you know what we're kind of going to be expecting upcoming, the spring game this past weekend, there were some stars. Jaden Bray, when I watched this game, I was like, that's the guy. That dude mm-hmm. is going to be the face of Oklahoma State come in the in the coming years. I mean, he really shined. But other than maybe him, what were your biggest takeaways from the spring game this weekend? And what are you kind of looking forward to as we move into summer and fall camp? 
So another another big storyline from Spring Game. I will admit I didn't really get a chance to watch it, but I watched some highlights. Um, I wasn't able to go, and they don't broadcast our Spring Game. But um, I, like I said, I did watch highlights, and Shane Illingworth was another thing that really stuck out to me. Um, there's going to be a little bit of heat in the QB room this off season, I think, um, and you know. I, I think that benefits both him and Spencer Sanders. I think them knowing that at any moment the other one could sort of swoop in and take the other's job, I think that puts a little bit of fire under their butts and, you know, makes them work harder. And like I said, I just was really impressed with what I saw from him in the spring game. Um, I think that, you know, what Spencer brings that Shane doesn't particularly have yet, I don't think is Spencer's legs are a little bit better, um, but Shane has the arm. Um, which I think when you're in the big 12, I think if your quarterback can't throw, you're kind of as well a little bit, but you know, I, I honestly, I'm really, like I said, I'm just really curious to see what happens with that situation as the spring progresses. Right. I, I think he played really well at his t- at times last year. I think, like you said, his legs, got, like not only his legs, but I feel like his pocket presence isn't the same as Sanders. Because Sanders, of course, when you can run, you can escape the pocket. I feel like Shane got a little flat footed in the pocket, took some sacks that probably Spencer wouldn't have taken, especially in that Tulsa game. There were like three or four. I was like, man, you just got to step up. Like, I just get out of there. But I want to move to more off the field stuff. You mentioned the Gundy situation this off season, but I mean, Gundy's been the head coach of this program since 05, 15 consecutive bowl games. He's p- brought them to almost the pinnacle of college football 2000. I believe I, I don't want to mess up the, I think it's like 11 or 12. They were like third in the country under Gundy. They were one game out of the uh, BCS at that time. It and was 2011. It, 2011. Okay, I, I was like, I knew it was one of those years right there. Burned I into my it. mind. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate that. But yeah, so he's brought them to the highest level. But I really want to know what is the tone of the campus and the media in Stillwater surrounding Gundy with this off this this really tumultuous all season to say the least and underperforming this year on the field at times. I mean, is is his job security is still as stable as it might seem? And just what's like kind of the tone surrounding Gundy right now? Um, there are a lot of people that would not be mad to see him go. Um, but at the same time, there are another side of the fan base that's like, well, I mean, we know he doesn't win Bedlam, but like, would you trade everything that Gundy has done or every, would you trade a typical Gundy season for a season that's not very good the rest of the year, but you win Bedlam every once in a while. Like what, you know? Um, so it, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's split. I feel like it leans a little bit toward people wanting him gone, but there is a, a fairly large faction of the fan base that's okay with Gundy. Um, but mostly the people that are okay with Gundy, it's because who are you going to get that's better at this point? Um, right. So honestly, I think people are kind of over him. If we're being totally honest. Um, But, you know, I think that when you've been a coach for, you've been a coach in the same program as long as Mike Gundy has, I think it's going to take a lot for him to, to leave or for him or for, for, for the athletic director to fire him. Um, So we'll just have to see what happens. That's, that's probably the toughest job for the AD that's taking over um is he's likely going to be the one that has to replace Mike Gundy and that's going to be a tough job I think yeah so I mean just kind of a follow-up to that do you think there's a set win number last year that Gundy has to hit or that if he doesn't hit it it could it could really signal the end of his like reign at Oklahoma State I think you would have to go under under 500 I think you would have to go less than half of the games if that happens I think he's gone I don't think yeah. you can justify that. Right. Cause I mean, you look at someone even down in like Texas with Tom Herman, I mean, just coming off a winning season, they just got tired of him. So they let him go. Then you had like Gus Malzahn at Auburn, you know, just constant eight win seasons. They got tired of him. They move on, go get Brian Harson. So it's, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this new Oklahoma state AD handles this Gundy situation. But 
I want to shift to recruiting. This is my favorite thing to talk about. I love recruiting. And a few months ago, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it's also mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's, it's amazing. I love talking recruits. But a top 30 class for the Cowboys last recruiting cycle that wrapped up in February, there's some real stars here. Kendall Daniels is probably going to be a high round NFL draft pick if he develops like I believe he can. But for you, what were the biggest positional needs for Oklahoma State? And do you see any instant impact guys in the class? Um, well, I mean, you're you're losing Tylen Wallace. Um, so wide receiver wasn't a huge need, but you definitely have to keep that pipeline going. Um and then safety um, was another big one with Darius Williams leaving. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, offensive line. Um, I'm always – I feel like you always need a lineman, yeah. um, especially with what happened last year with all of the injuries. That kind of really put them in a bind. So, you know, that's a spot that you need to recruit for so that if you have that happen again, you have people that can – sustain it um i'm trying to think of other i mean running back um with chuba leaving running back was a position of need too i think so overall i think they did a fairly good job of getting the needs of the class for sure um i really like the green twins um i think they're going to be studs um kendall daniels was another one like you said that i'm really excited to see too so Right. And, you know, there was like this narrative that, you know, with this Gundy situation, the recruiting was going to take a hit. The team was going to quit on him. But you look at you look ahead to 2022 and Oklahoma State is on fire for mm -hmm. this next recruiting class. I mean, they're right up there for one of the best classes in the country. I believe they're second in the Big 12 right now. How has Gundy and the staff harnessed such great momentum into this next recruiting class, especially, uh, you know, alter with COVID where they still can't bring these kids into campus yet until probably a few weeks from now. I mean, how has, how have they done this for this 2022 class so far? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously don't, you know, have that much insight into what they're doing. <laughs> But, um, you know, I think a lot of it is they've got um, some really good I – mean, Casey Dunn is really good at recruiting. Um, and, you know, I, I think that his experience as um, offensive coordinator now has kind of played into that, um, you know, because he's – I mean, he's responsible for making the OSU wide receiver position what it is today, I think. Um, so – and I honestly would be curious to think about, you know, I, I don't – I'm not totally sure that it's not – that virtual visits didn't help them. Um, as far as, you know, I, 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 I think that, you know, they were kind of able to just let the, let the facilities and stuff do the talking. Um, you know, they didn't particularly have to, you know, do a lot of extra effort of, you know, whining and dining them, so to speak. Um, you know, I, 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 I'd be curious just to see if maybe Gundy's better talking to recruits on zoom than he is in a living room. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that's, I'm sure that was a challenging, a challenge. It's, I'm sure it was a challenging year and it's interesting that they've done so well with it being such a challenging year recruiting wise. Um, I know that we had a bunch of kids come for the spring game um, and on their first in-person visits, which was awesome. We did get a, um, a commitment out of it. I do not remember his name off the top of my head. <laughs> There's I wrote so this, many. Right, right. <laughs> A Avion Jones, um, he ended up committing after the spring game. So that was, and he was a huge get um, yeah. for Jim Knowles and his staff. So, um, you know, I think they've been able to, and also our recruiting staff does an awesome job. Um, our graphic design team for recruiting, shout out to them. They are amazing. Um, and I think that they, they've really put a lot of, honestly, that's, that's what I think it is. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, the materials that they're sending out to recruits are better. Um, they're putting more effort into their social media on recruiting. Um, you know, so I think a lot of it has to do with the creative team behind recruiting. I think they've just, they've made some new hires there that have just been stellar. So it's a culmination of, you know, the, the new staff members coaching wise and the new staff members from a, you know, graphic design, uh, content, create creative content 
side as well. It kind of it's it's interesting how all that plays into it for sure. Yeah, I think it's gonna be that's really good that they have that in place. So especially with this new um name image lightness stuff coming out, you're going to need that background and just how to be creative in promoting yourself. So for Oklahoma State to sit back at a recruit's house and be like, listen, we know you want this sponsorship, this sponsorship, we can design this, this and this for you. And I think that mm -hmm. goes miles in terms of plugging Stillwater and plugging what they can do for the kids in that aspect. So I really like to hear that. But back to the field and back to next season. That next season is going to be a really big one for Oklahoma State. But first, I want to look at some players. I mean, are there any players that you have in mind that myself and any of our listeners might not know about that you think could have their breakout season next year? Hmm. Let me think about that. Let me look at a list because I feel like that'll jog my memory. <laughs> That's what everyone does. Every time I ask this question, we've done two, we've done three conferences now, and everyone's like, wasn't ready for that one. One second, I need a roster <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> Give me two seconds. Okay. Uh, I think. LD Brown is one that I could see kind of having a little bit of a breakout year um, next year um, because, you know, I think he's going to be running back number one next year with Chuba being absent, uh, you know, with Chuba moving on. I, I think he's going to have to, and so, as a redshirt senior, you know, he's got the experience. Um, and then another guy in the running back room that I really like is um, Anderson. I think he really showed a lot of potential uh, last year. Um, and I think that he will continue that this next year. Um, and then you've got, um, you know, Malcolm Monroe, you guys, he's kind of one that everybody knows, but you know, him, he was actually, um, no, that was Kobe Hubbard. Kobe Hubbard Peel was actually set to go to the NFL, but then chose to come back. That was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I think that I don't necessarily, uh, Dominique Richardson, um, he's another running back that I think will share reps with LD Brown that'll, that showed a lot of potential at the end of the season last year, um, that people might not necessarily know. Um, but I think is going to be really important. Um, let's see. I think that's, I think that's my top, my top guys. Right. Uh, I think LD Brown last year might have been, I mean, the most consistent running back on the roster. I mean, I believe it was the West Virginia game. He just went, he just went crazy and carried Oklahoma State to the win against a really good defense. And, I mean, he just put on a show. I remember I, we covered that game on the podcast, and I was like, who is this kid? And how is he still on the roster as, you know, like you said, a, a, he was like almost a senior. I'm like, you don't see upperclassmen stay when they're behind someone like Chuba. But mm -hmm. I want to look at the schedule. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Oklahoma State has a tough road ahead. Tulsa and Boise State are brutal out-of-conference out matchups. That Tulsa defense – was something to see. It's a top 25 team. We'll see how Boise State fares without Harson. I thought they made a really good hire after he left, but it's on the road. It's on the blue turf, which is going to be very interesting. And then you get Iowa State, Texas, and West Virginia all on the road, which are all really tough road environments, especially there at Iowa State. For you, though, what is the ceiling and or floor for this 2021 Oklahoma State team? I mean, I feel like the ceiling is always Big 12 championship. Um, you know, I, th I, I honestly, I don't know that this team couldn't at least get there. Um, right. I don't, I, I mean, I'm not willing to say they would win, but, you know, I, I, right. I, I don't, I, I could see them at Dallas, in Dallas at the end of the season. I think that's their ceiling. Floor? Six and five, um, not making a bowl game. That could also very possibly happen, um, which is, I mean, the pinnacle of this program the last few years. It's like you either are very mediocre or, you know, 
top being talked about for big 12 championships. Um, you know, so I think, I think that's my floor and my ceiling. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's kind of like that for everyone. Every, like some people, like I, sometimes I get like the play by play guys on here and they're like, I can't say anything less than undefeated because I work for the university. And it's like, I understand bad question, but yeah, I, I think that, I think that's kind of the range of Oklahoma state there. You know, I'm an Auburn grad. We're the same way. It's either here or miss. We're either winning the, we're either competing for the SEC or we are just abysmal. So I feel you there, but you know, I had a trip planned to Stillwater last year before COVID hit and everything was wiped out. I finally moved up here to Kansas. And so it was like right there. I'm like, I'm going to go to Stillwater. And then COVID said, no, you're not. But <laughs> I want you to like, uh, <laughs> I want you to like tell me and tell our listeners what makes Stillwater in this beautiful Boom Pick Stadium such a unique environment on game days. What made me fall in love with Stillwater um, is the fact that the university is this town, um, you know, and I think that the, the community knows that. So on a football game day, the whole community is just super into it. The atmosphere is just electric, um, especially during homecoming. Um, our homecoming is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. It's amazing. And if you get a chance to come down for it, I highly encourage it. Um, it's a blast. Um, but so, I mean, Stillwater on a game day is just, it's an entire city that is into one event that, you know, wants, that's just rallying behind a team. And it's just, it's awesome. Um, you've got the walk, which is where they have a, Kind of a kind of a mini parade where the team comes out of the student union and goes to the stadium and the fans are lined up the line the street as they're walking into the stadium and it's just everybody cheering them on and it's it's awesome. Um the tailgating here is great. I mean it's 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 no grove, but um <laughs> you know, people people are you can you can tailgate on campus, so everybody's got their tent set up and they're grilling and barbecuing and just having a great time. It's just it's just a game day. It, game day is just a fun day. It's my favorite day of the week for sure. Every week during the season. That's good to hear. I'm excited. I'm going to try to come down this year. I just have like, I have this COVID problem where it's like, I didn't get to go to any of my trips last year. So now I have this year's trips and next year's trips. It's all jammed into one season. So mm -hmm. every week's going to be somewhere new, but yeah, don't worry. I've been to the Grove at Ole Miss for an Auburn game. I'd never try to compare any school to the Grove. Cause like you said, it is, <laughs> I mean, it is once in a lifetime type tailgating down there in the Grove. So shout out to all the Ole Miss supporters on the pod for listening to the podcast. Cause y'all do it right. I had an absolute blast down at Ole Miss, but I appreciate you joining me talking Oklahoma State football. I was an honorary Oklahoma State fan last year. I took a lot of flack for it because week in and week out, I was like, Chuba Hubbard's going to run for 400 yards to make up for the first six weeks of the season. My co-host roasted me for it. He's a big Chuba Hubbard fan too, but he lost hope a lot quicker than I did. But I appreciate it. Where can our listeners find you? I know you do a whole lot of things. The SB Nation websites are always a hit for me. Those are some of my favorite websites to look at. So where can they find everything you do? So um, the Cowboys Ride for Free Twitter is at Cowboys RFF. You can follow me there. I, I Most of the time you see that account tweeting, it's me. Um, and then my personal account is at Micah Allen 18. Um, that's where you'll see me tweet about my fandoms and hobbies and stuff. But I, I tweet about sports sometimes. <laughs> um, so you can follow me there. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. <sighs> that's where I am. Yeah. <laughs> y'all can find her pretty easily uh the sb nation website y'all have to check out they do an amazing job there i think that's a common theme across all sb nation websites that's on point but guys y'all know where to find us man you know youtube the blue bloods y'all know our social media make sure to subscribe tonight this will be dropping thursday april 29th it's draft day make sure to catch our first round nfl draft stream tonight live on twitch periscope facebook and youtube so check us out there. But I appreciate Micah for joining us again. Uh, I'll definitely be reaching out closer to the season. And if I can make it down to Stillwater this year, hopefully, fingers crossed. But guys, make sure to go check out all things Micah does. But for her, myself, undrafted sports, the Blue Bloods, we are out.